Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to take a look at Critter, which is an open source painting program, which you can download and use for free on either Windows or Linux. Now, for some time now, many of you have been saying to me, Chris, take a look at Critter, particularly as you're trying to transition to Linux, you're trying to find alternatives to things like Photoshop, you must take a look at Critter. And so in this video, I'm going to do just that. Right, here I am in uh, Linux Mint on the nicer Linux desktop again. And if we go to the uh, Critter website, we can find out all about Critter. Critter's used to make some fantastic artwork, as you can see, looking at its uh, website. Now, there is a Get Critter button here, but because I'm in uh, Linux Mint, I'm actually going to use the installer, the software manager, to actually install Critter under Linux. I could do it without using a terminal, but people moan at me when I do that. So I'll go to the menu and I'll go to the uh, software manager. And then I'll put in my password for the system because it requires it. There we are. And uh, we'll get on with installing Critter for Linux. I'll show you how to install it for Windows in a second as well. So regardless of what operating system we're using, you can install it. Well, if you're using a Mac, you can install it for Mac. I'm not going to show you that. You'll have to do that yourself. Anyway, if I search for a Critter in the uh, installer, it'll come up. There it is. Look, there's Critter. And hopefully in a second it'll show us that. There it is. Look, lots of reviews. People tend to like the thing. And we'll just press install. And it'll get on with that. So we'll just flick through the install. And uh, there we are. Critter is now Install. That's nice and straightforward, isn't it? We'll just close that down. And in theory, we can now go to the uh, menu, go to uh, graphics, and uh, Critter is there. I should just say that sometimes I've found under Linux Mint, packages don't immediately arrive in the menu. You have to do a restart. But here, Critter was there straight away. So we can select Critter. And there we are. The Critter program has run up. And it has a splash screen here, which I'm going to say hide after startup in the future. We'll continue with that. And here we are. We've got Critter now running under a Linux Mint. But uh, because some of you might not be running Linux Mint, you might be running Windows, for example, I'll go and show you how you can do a quick Windows install before we start experimenting with this package. Right, having installed Critter for Linux, we'll also do so in Windows because you might be running Windows. So we'll go to a, a web browser here in Chrome. I've gone to a critter.org and we can just click on a Get Critter Now. And uh, we'll have some options available, which are, uh, there we are, Windows and Windows 64-bit installer, if you're running 64-bit Windows, which is highlighted for me because I am. So I'll click on that. And uh, it'll pick up the file. I've already set a download directory to a, a Critter folder. I'll press Save. The download will therefore start down here. We'll let that whiz through. And uh, there we are with the download complete. We'll uh, come out of that nip to the folder, and we can then just click on the exe file and install the software. Nice and easy install. Do we want to do it? Yes, we do. I will accept the license, and we'll go to next. That is fine. Yes, we'll do that. No, we won't have shell integration. I always like not to have things messing up my shell. Thank you very much. I'm sure it's a lovely program, but we'll leave things like that. Uh, that is fine, a folder called Critter. That's OK. Uh, we'll have a desktop icon too and install. And uh, there we are, speeding through that, finish it off, and we should find there's a Critter icon here, and we can now launch Critter in Windows, which should look pretty similar to how we launched it under Linux. And there we are, and uh, we have Critter running under Windows, just as we had before. But I think I'm now going to flick back into, the, into Linux, into Linux Mint, and we'll see what we can do with this package. Right, so uh, here we are in Critter. I've just spent a lovely few hours getting to know this software a little bit. If you want to uh, draw a picture in this package, this is exactly how it looks after you've first got into the program. You just go to File and New. I'm sure you'd have guessed that. And there's all sorts of presets, but we'll use the default here, which is a document what 1600 by 1200 pixels in the RGB color model. So I press Enter on that. And that appears there on the screen for us. And we can zoom in and out using the uh, 
scale down there, or we can zoom in and out using the plus and minus arrows on the keyboard. By default, the tool we've got is the brush tool, which appears there. And if I put that on the screen, you'll see it draws, uh, draws lines. You would guess that's what a, a brush tool would do. And we can go over and change the color. You'd also guess that. You change the color by using the edge of this color wheel. So we could pick up, say, I know that's nice blue color there. And then we use the middle here to actually pick the uh, saturation of that color and also its level of uh, brightness. So it's important you recognize that in Critter, you have to pick the edge and then the middle. Sometimes you could, for example, end up up here and we've got a black color there. You'd move around the edge and say, oh, I've got a blue color now. You haven't got a blue color now. You're still on black because you've got a very dark version of the blue. We have to make it a bit more saturated, a bit lighter. And then we could start scribbling with it on the screen. We've got a multiple layer system going on here, just as you have in Photoshop. So by default, it gives you two layers, a white layer and a transparent layer, which we're currently drawing. If we took the opacity of that layer down, you could see we haven't drawn that there much at all. And if I go to the layer below and I draw on that layer, then it's drawing on there. And again, we could prove that because if we go to a top layer, take down the opacity of that layer, we can see just the one underneath. So multiple layer drawing works very nicely in Critter. Having said all this, the thing you really want to see in Critter is the brush presets. This is a fantastic painting program. It's an artist program. And as you can see here, there are loads and loads and loads of different brushes available. Some doing quite beautiful sort of things on, on, on the screen and, and all mirroring really to a large extent traditional artist tools. Let's pick up a different, different color so we can see that. And if we go back to the top again, I'll pick say, I know a standard sort of marker pen there. Um, I would note I've currently got a Wacom tablet connected to the computer so I can draw with a stylus and Critter is pricking up its pressure sensitivity. So if I draw very lightly there, you get that. If I draw heavily, you can see we're getting a stronger color. And you can see straight away, this is, this is an artist package. This is a real painting package, not just a paint package because the colors are interacting as they would from proper artist tools. We can really work with this and do some beautiful sort of color and, and associated effects. As I said, I've been playing with this all afternoon. Having said that, I tend to go back to some very traditional tools, maybe given my roots during traditional animation, I like the traditional drawing tools. Let's try and draw a traditional sort of animated character with those. We'll do a new document, another one, and just enter again to use that. If you've got multiple documents open, you just go back and forth on tabs, nice and straightforwardly. So I'll now try here to draw, where am I? There we are on the screen. Control Z to get rid of that. It's a very long while since I've been drawing uh, cartoon characters. As you can probably see, that hasn't started very well at all, has it? But that we will try and turn this into a little, little cartoon character. I used to do this for a living. I can't believe that now, but I did. And let's try and draw the sides of their little face there and the uh, top of their little neck, neck and the smiley thing. And oh yes, little. This will keep me happy for hours, this will. Give me a little, little hairstyle there. And uh, little shoulders, I think. Maybe I'll just whiz ahead as I try to draw this. And uh, as I think we're proving, it's a very long time, as I said, since I drew anything like this. This is not exactly easy. I can't draw with a stylus. I'm very much back to drawing with a pencil. That's what I was used to doing all those years ago. But now we draw with computers these, don't we? And it's, in theory, much easier. And we could then go potentially in and um, curl that in. I could go to the bottom layer and go back to pick up a nice, uh, what should we do? Something a bit like a markery penny thing. Maybe go and pick a color which is gonna be roughly flesh tone like. I was almost there, wasn't I? Ah, uh, it'll probably do. Could we color that in? Or we could just do a bit of that. There we are, I don't think the uh, the BBC will be getting me back anytime soon, but we've proved the principle. You can draw cartoon characters and things using Critter. When you've actually done an image, you then obviously want to save it. We went to File and uh, Save. It was saved by default. We'll put it in, say, Pictures in the uh, Critter format. So we'll do a Test uh, Drawing and save that. And then we could then pull that back in and work in it again. But if you were to put that image into something else, you would go to File and you'd do Export. And from Export, we can export this in all sorts of formats, including things like uh, 
JPEG. So we can save as a JPEG or a PNG or something like that you could take into another package. Right, having done some basic painting, let's talk a little bit more about settings and, and features and, and tools you've got available in the package. The last brush I was using was this one, which you can see is about that size, but there are various ways to change the size of a brush. For a start, you can use this slider up here. We've now got a very large brush or a very, very tiny brush, but you could also use the parenthesis keys on the keyboard to change the brush size. If I press those down, then we can move one way or the other using the two parenthesis keys. That's a nice feature for changing brush characteristic when you're actually painting. In a similar way, when you're painting, if you press the uh, right mouse button or the uh, uppermost button on most uh, styluses using with a tablet, you will get this appear, which allows you to change color and also select different brushes on the fly again when you're painting in situ. That's very handy. Again, we use parenthesis key to uh, make our, our brush slightly bigger there. So this is really designed for an artist getting on with their work. In terms of that, you can also use the plus and minus keys on the keyboard as you can in many packages to zoom in and to zoom out. If we zoom straight in, you might think, I want more space to work on. You can do that fairly easily. You can press the tab key and that'll give you access to looking at the thing in, in full screen mode. And if you want to move around on the image, if you press down the space bar, you can then move around the screen, which is again, very handy, isn't it? Yes, it's very handy. I'm now talking to things I've drawn on the screen. That's very sad. Anyway, I'll press the tab key to get back again and maybe zoom out roughly back to where we were. Pull things nice, must keep tidy, you know. We've got, those are the tools here, which will work using by and large the characteristics of the current brush. So if I picked up, say, a rectangle tool and drew that, it would draw a rectangle using the current brush size and brush style. And similarly for lines and, and circles and ellipses. And you've even got things like Bezier tools here. We've also got selection tools, so you could pick up, say, a rectangular selection or selections in your own particularly defined sizes or elliptical selections. So you can take bits of the image and work on those, cut them out, put them on other layers, etc. You've got all the tools you would expect for manipulating the pixels in your image. While Critter is predominantly a paint package, it's worth noting you can do a little bit of standard photo manipulation type of work in it. So for example, if I brought in a photograph, I did an open, and I think, for example, the one I want is 68, is a picture of a, uh, a microprocessor there. So we've got a picture of a microprocessor. We might want to do things other than just drawing on it with a brush, which I really don't want to do. I'll control Z that. But if we want to, for example, change some of the colors on that, we could go into filter here. Now there's various things you can do. Um, there are things like artistic effects. I love the raindrops effect, which allows you to put raindrops on an image. We do that, which is lovely, isn't it? And if you happen to want raindrops on an image, not a good thing with microprocessors, so we'll get rid of that. But if you want to do the more traditional photo things, go into filter and adjust. And as you can see, you can adjust um, the color. Uh, you've got a color adjustment curves. You can desaturate. Uh, we do things like auto contrast if we wanted to, which is not, terribly what I would want there, but we could go into something like, say, the um, levels, which is a much more common tool for use of photo work. Not a brilliant levels tool, but it does work, and it will allow us to have a little bit of better control of the image to make a better holdout effect there, which is about, I would think, about like. That's probably about better, isn't it? That's where we started, and that's, yes, that's where we end up. That's pretty good. We could, uh, crop that down to something we might want to use. So I could go and select that and do a image and uh, trim to uh, selection. There we are. We could sharpen it up. We could go into filter and enhance and sharpen. Sadly, no control of the sharpen, but it does basically work like that. And we could then resize that to be image and we could uh, set image to new, scale image to new size, which be maybe, I don't know, 600 by whatever it would come out at. And of course we could just have a look, it worked okay, which it has. So you could use, if you want Critter to do some standard stuff like sort of basically basic color work on an image, resizing, saving out again, which let's be honest, is the bread and butter of what you do in many photo editing packages. There's no doubt at all that Critter is a really nice open source 
painting program. It's got lots of great functionality, a really nice feel to it. It feels like a quality piece of software. Is it an alternative to everything Photoshop can do? No, it isn't, and it doesn't claim to be. It claims to be a painting program, not a photo editing program, although to be honest, it has got some decent photo editing tools as well. And certainly, Cutter is something I'll now have available to me on machines, whether I'm running Windows or Linux, it's a good tool in the artist's armory. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed this video, please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.